folks, this is Jay Haskamp with Frontier Precision. I'd like to welcome you to another one of our Tech Talk videos today. Um, in this video, we're going to discuss doing the electronic level check and the compensator calibration in our Trimble Robotic Total Station. Uh, we often get asked how many times a year, how often should I do these collimations or calibrations? It's always kind of a hot uh, topic when we do these presentations at our user groups and trainings and so on. So a couple of suggestions on the screen here for you. One would be before the start of any large project. So if you're going to be on something for a long period of time or a high profile project, definitely make sure you take a few minutes to just run through the onboard field collimations on your robot. I would say bare minimum at the very least, maybe once every quarter. That technically still in my mind isn't enough. Maybe in some places that have uh, more consistent temperatures and things like that, it, it, you can get by with it. Um, but I would say bare minimum once a quarter. But uh, the tracker collimation, that's a particular um, collimation we're not going to talk about in this video. Um, that's adjusting the auto lock and the tracker. Um, that one We'll talk about it in another video, but just a recommendation for that would be about once a month. That would be kind of my bare minimum uh, suggestion there. And for sure, any larger temperature changes. Now, up here in Minnesota, where we are at today, um, we, we could start out at 10 degrees in the morning and be up to 60 degrees in the afternoon. Um, that's a pretty large swing in temperature, and all of that uh, change has an effect on how our instrument measures. So definitely any large temperature changes. Also, these instruments should be sent in once a year for an annual calibration and a cleaning from a service provider. You probably see a message pop up on your controller when you connect your robot from time to time that says your instrument is due for servicing. Um, that's just a reminder to get this in. It's kind of like changing the oil on your car. You need to do some cleaning and some maintenance on these instruments to keep them working properly. Now going back to these field collimations, there's something that you're also going to want to do after you get your instrument back from service. When you get it into service, they'll check everything out, they'll dial it in, but all your values are always going to be set back to zero. So it's always good practice when you get your instrument back to take the time to run through these field collimations. All right, so let's get into the actual adjustment part of what we're going to do today. So uh, before we get started, just want to note that it's important that uh, the instrument has been powered up for about three minutes before we start this calibration procedure. Uh, this is just to get the compensator warmed up and ready to go. Uh, the first step what we will do out in the field here is we'll take a look at um, the electronic level. We'll just do a check to see if we need to run the collimation and whether or not we need to we're still going to run through the process of doing the compensator calibration so everybody can see what that looks like. Alright so let's take a look at how this works. All right, before we do the compensator calibration, the first thing we want to do is check our electronic level and make sure that our level uh, looks either good or bad. Regardless of how it looks in this particular test, we're going to still run the calibration to show you how it looks, but there's a couple things we want to look for in our test to make sure that we're comfortable with how um, our electronic level is working in our instrument. So I'm connected up to my S7. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit my instrument icon on the screen to get into my functions menu. And then I'm going to select number five, which is, is the uh, electronic level button. And I can see on my screen here, I'm off just a little tiny bit. I'm going to make just a quick adjustment here to get it tight, uh, get it dialed in here. It's the wrong way. All right, so what we're looking for to test our electronic level is I have the gun facing one way. And I'm looking at the values on my screen. I have a leveled up. I'm looking at my sighting and my trunnion values. My sighting is at four seconds and my trunnion is at five seconds. All I should have to do is take this instrument and turn it 180 degrees and I look at my values again and they should be the same but the signs should be opposite. So I have two seconds in my sighting and I have negative four seconds in my trunnion. So my sighting might be a little bit off here and at this point, I would want to run my compensator calibration. So I'm going to hit accept, and then I'll move on to the, to the next uh, menu to do the adjustment. Okay, so now we have our robot set up, and now we're going to run through the compensator calibration that we talked about in the presentation. So I have my S7 here, and I have my TSC7, and I'm going to run through the process on how to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do in this newest version of Trimble Access is I'm going to pick my menu button, and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for the instrument menu and then I'm going to select adjust. Now an adjust menu is where we do the compensator calibration, our trunnion collimation and, and, and access tilt, uh, our auto lock collimation and things like that. So the compensator calibration is the first one on the top of the list so I'm going to select it and hit next. 
and now it's going to go into the calibration routine and it's reminding me to make sure I have a stable instrument set up. You can see I have a really high quality Trimax tripod here and I have it nice and wide and I have it stomped into the ground nice and tight. It's a nice sturdy setup. It's a dual locking system so I have a really good tripod so I know that I'm ready, I'm ready to go. And now I'm going to hit the next button and now you can see it's spinning the scope. So the first thing it's doing is balancing the scope of the instrument and now it'll calibrate the compensator meaning that it's going to spin every so many degrees and stop and keep going all the way until it goes all the way around and when it's all the way around it's complete. Okay now that it's spun all around you can see the scope spins back and on my data collector it says the calibration is complete. Now all we have to do is hit OK and we're good to go. Okay now that our calibration process is complete I just want to make one quick note about the level bubble um, in the Phase 2 display on the actual instrument. So um, on most of the Trimble robots there is a display on the Phase 2 side of the instrument and when we start them up and we go into the setup and level there is an option to uh, see the level bubble and level the instrument from that screen. The uh, exceptions to the rule that, don't, that do not have the Phase 2 display would be the S3 or the SX10 but most of the other guns um, will all have this display. Once you're on the display the default scale of the level bubble is 1 to 250. You can however push the down button on the instrument and change that scale from 1 to 100, 1 to 10, and down to 1 to 1. Um, 1 to 1 is very sensitive. You could barely just push on your tripod leg and you would see that level bubble jump. Um, so it's not practical for uh, typical use but just to know that you can um, change that scale and tighten that level up a little bit more if you wish. Typically I will go down to 1 to 10 which may be a little overkill um, but technically you are just fine leaving that bubble on the instrument leveled to the 1 to 250 scale or like most people do you can just use the bubble on the screen within Trimble Access. The compensator uh, takes care of any of the minor misleveling that may still be there so technically doing by the 1 to 250 is fine as long as we run that compensator calibration regularly. That is much more important than scaling the level bubble down to a 1 to 10 to try to, to, try to dial your level in a little bit tighter. So a quick summary, uh, check your instruments regularly. A, a little uh, TLC goes a long way with these instruments. Field checks are definitely necessary when working with the auto lock or the robotic total stations. Uh, these instruments should be calibrated annually via the service provider and then remembering to also do the field collimations after you get it back from the service shop. Uh, robotic trackers, again, something we didn't cover today, we'll cover in another video, but those should be collimated regularly as well. Um, just like the compensator calibration that we did today. And then just remember that a regular maintenance will go a long way in maintaining the accuracy of your instruments. And that concludes our discussion today on the compensator calibration. We hope you found this video helpful, and we'll join us again next time. Thank you.